we've all been there as a writer. We give our material to somebody and they come back with this quip. This is purple prose. And then you wonder, what is purple prose anyway? As a newbie, you can be completely confused. What makes writing purple? Now your mind may race to fun theories. Is it like a script written by Barney the Dinosaur? But no, the reference to purple comes from Ars Poetica by the Roman poet Horace. Weighty openings and grand declarations often have one or two purple patches tacked on that gleam far and wide when Diana's grove and her altar, the winding stream hastening through lovely fields, or the river Rhine, or the rainbows being described. There's no place for them here. Perhaps you know how to draw a cypress tree. So what if you've been given money to paint a sailor plunging from a shipwreck in despair? Horace was writing to the symbolic nature of purple at the time royalty and snobs. If you wore a purple robe or cloak, well, you'd be showing off your wealth for the whole town. You wanted everyone to see just how important you were. With this in mind, Horace ties the color purple to pretentiousness. And this is how it ties into writing. Purple prose is considered overly pretentious and verbose in order to make the writer look as important as possible. In most cases, these overblown passages don't lead the story anywhere or focus on anything important. They just stop the action cold. A little detour off your main highway of writing to stop and smell the sun-kissed, beautiful roses. In other words, it's pointless and unnecessary. That's purple. But I know what you're thinking. I'm an author. Isn't my job to paint a world and immerse my readers in an alternate reality? Am I not supposed to describe things in vivid detail? I mean, I don't want my characters just sitting in a blank room talking to each other. So how do you know when your writing is hitting the mark and when you're off in purple land? And I'm gonna give you a solid answer. You don't always know. Yes, yes, I know, but here are a few tips that will help you avoid purple prose. In most cases, there's no need for figurative language. A well-chosen noun, well-placed adjective, or verb can paint the picture much more effectively than an overblown metaphor will. Now, part of the fun of writing and reading is discovering these figurative phrases. It can also tell the audience a lot about your point of view character or give your prose a distinctive voice. Just be careful with how often you put in this sort of language. Think of it more as salt than flour. It's often a marker of amateur writing to see layer after layer after layer of figurative prose when straightforward language would serve the purpose much better. Arger's muscles rippled like waves beneath a crisscross of bulging veins that covered them. The force of the blow shifting some of the beads of sweat that peppered his forehead like morning dew shaken from a leaf. Well, that's um, kind of painful. The key point here is picking your moments carefully. When does it make sense to use figurative language? When does it put the audience in the head of the point of view character or convey your voice in an effective way versus just be distracting? to bring so much emphasis on itself that it's clear you're so proud of your figurative language that you forgot that it stands out like a sore thumb. Great descriptive writing is only as descriptive as it needs to be. You don't always need to go into every detail about a character's appearance or the way a location looks. Often, the audience can fill in the gaps, and they prefer to fill in the gaps, letting their imagination take hold and start to form the work together with you. Now, it's great to get into those vivid details and capture the audience's imagination, but remember, you're there to kickstart their imagination, not hold their hand and paint every single line for them and spell out every vivid detail. No. That will bore the audience, not to mention it will slow down your narrative action to a halt. Now a character could step into a room and notice that a lily is sitting on a vase. Take a quick glance and keep moving. The audience knows what a lily is, they don't need a lot of detail, it's just setting the scene, setting the environment. 
Or the character could walk into the room, ponder the lily, imagine how the lily compares to other objects, use figurative language, talk about the emotional state that the lily conjures up in their head, take a lot of time to discuss the purpose of lilies. As you may realize this starts to get purple in a hurry especially if the point of the book is not this lily people will wonder why are you focusing so much attention on it do you just want to bring to my mind that you're really good at describing a lily because guess what i know what a lily looks like and your cleverness is just gonna stand out now we would all be ecstatic if our first drafts were free of purple prose even if we're trying to pay attention to it but the truth of the matter is is you're never going to fully avoid it you're gonna have to look back at your writing take some stock as to whether or not the description is adding to the scene distracting bringing too much attention to itself and then rewriting is necessary you can and over focus on worrying about purple prose. After all, a first draft is a first draft. You're finding your story, you're learning about your characters, you're exploring your world, and being overly paranoid is not going to be the answer either. You can keep it in the back of your mind so you can avoid having to throw out 200 pages of manuscript at the end of your writing process. But don't be so paranoid about it that it bogs down your writing and you find yourself rewriting the same paragraph 20 times in a row. All that's going to do is delay your progress and maybe keep you from finishing your manuscript altogether. Do you have specific tips that you use to avoid purple prose? Did you find that you had a problem with it in the past and you developed techniques in order to avoid it? Please comment below and help us avoid purple prose one paragraph at a time. Until next time, get writing.